Ever since I was about two years old, Grecian images have been a huge part of my dreams. And when I got older, I started to read the myths and watch the few films that there were because they just made so much sense to me and I just found them so beautiful. For instance, there was a god for seasons or the god of war. He was also the god of iron. And when I was young, I remember going to the zoo and watching the lions because I love to watch the lions. And then we went and looked at the anteater and it was the first time I'd ever seen an anteater. And I said to myself immediately, a different god designed this anteater than the one who designed the lion. And that was how the Greeks thought and we have that in common. So recently I was reading a collection of poems titled The Metamorphosis written by Ovid. And in this collection, he writes of a nymph, Pomona, who has this incredible green touch. And she can make fruit trees grow anywhere, even in the most barren of landscapes. So you'll see this desert and then this pomegranate tree just in the middle of it on its own that she had planted. And all the gods were in love with her and all the demigods were in love with her and they were all in love with her for the same reason, that she, that she could make, that she could create such beauty out of the earth and makes, have such control over her surroundings and that's why I fell in love with her and I've always liked girls that have control over their surroundings or can make beautiful things out of the earth. So I came out here to this natural place to find some peace and some quiet and to gather some power from this landscape to tell this myth that is very close to me. Um, the myth of Pomona. She wasn't interested in gods or men, and she never went out hunting. So to keep these crude country lovers out of reach, she locked her garden gates against mankind. The satyrs danced to catch her eye. They came by every day, and she wasn't having any of it.
One day Vertumnus, the god of seasons, came, and he, deeper than others, fell in love. but had the same results. He came dressed as a lazy fisherman with flies and tackle or a soldier in his battle dress. In these disguises, and because of his selfish desire, he was able to look his fix at a respectable distance. when he needed to be closer to her, and when looking just wasn't enough. He came dressed as an old lady, wrapped in a turban and bent on a stick. Who stumbled as he walked around the garden, saying how fine the pomegranates were. But you, my dear, he says, are better looking and kissed her with more admiration than any elder woman would have. You're still unmarried and you hope to stay so. If you could change your mind, you'd have more lovers than Helen, the girl who caused a war between centaurs. And though you turn your face away from lovers, you have a thousand, count them men and gods and demigods. I speak for Vertumnus. I know him just as well as he knows me. He tells me you will be his first and last. His life is yours. He's the first to touch your lovely harvest gathered in his hands. But more than to the beauties of your garden, he wants you. So be kind to him. Be more than kind, have mercy on him. Remember Venus who takes fearful toll on those who wear hard hearts and human bodies. Remember gods in heat. The young god finishes his sermon. And realizing that the elderly advice isn't moving Pomona, he drops the dress he wears as an old lady and stands as naked before her, himself as naked as the sun in glory. With or without consent, he stands to take her. And she, so dazzled by his godlike figure, takes warmth and melts in his arms.
There's an insecurity you see here in Vertumnus's eyes, and that's not in Ovid's poem. I thought that it was important because once you've completely stripped yourself and opened yourself and opened your heart to somebody, there's a moment of insecurity that passes through you. It's like when you jump off a cliff into the water, and right as you jump off, that feeling comes over you. And also in these times, I think that it's, the chase is romanticized so much, and I see so many people romanticize the chase. And once the chase is over, it seems there's a part of you that becomes uninterested, or at least there's a part that doubts for a second. Is my life going to end? Is this it? And I think that's what Vertumnus is doing. And he's young, but he's a god, and he's in love. And I'm not a god. Ooh.